Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we are going to give you a little bit of an update on all of the projects that we have done thus far this year. And um, not all of them, but more like gardening related. So it'll be slash of a little bit garden update and garden tour all in one. That way you can see how things are progressing and things are moving in real time here in our North Carolina Zone 7B gardens. So um, remember we, so we're gonna focus really kind of like around the house today. Uh, we may pop over to the greenhouse to the nursery and see that as well. All right, so first things first, standing here, <laughs> I know you're gonna laugh at me when I say this, we're standing at the shade garden that is currently in full sun. But remember, shade gardens mean they get four hours or less of direct sun. Well, we are now currently in my four hours of direct sun in this bed. This is nice early in the morning, so this is early sunlight in the shade bed. This is in the shade in the afternoon, really starting from about, starts 1130-ish, um, and then on the shade comes. So I wanted to give you an update because everything is just looking so nice right now. Um, if you are a southerner and southern gardener or deal with a lot of heat and humidity, you know that this is gonna be about the best as my hosses look because no matter what we do with our heat and humidity, they just start to look sad when the true heat of the summer hits. And so everybody is doing really, really nicely, nice and full, could not be happier with how everything is filling in. When we did this uh, tour, somebody was asking about what happened to the zebra hydrangea. Nothing happened to it. I just had to trim it back because I lost, um, I had some stems in there that were not very healthy, but you can see that there she is, she's still in her same spot. And I do have one, I'm, I don't think I'm only gonna get one flower off of her this year. That is because of just the crazy weather we had this year. The hay racks are doing great. Uh, remember, I planted all three of these the same, both the wall hanging and then the hay rack. This is the Lemon Blush Caladium with the Double Delight Primrose Begonia. It is a mounding and trailing begonia everybody is just doing so nicely see this is already starting to go in the shade so that's what happens here um the sun kings of course are still just absolutely growing their sweet little heads off there are two of these in here i had no clue that they were going to get this big uh, when i planted them they clearly love life right here and are very very happy I did have to trim just a little bit selective pruning on them right here so that this hay rack was not going to get covered up because I do want those begonias to really kind of, you know, fill in and trail down a little bit. But I mean, y'all look at this. If you get a chance with that double delight uh, primrose, gorgeous, just beautiful. Uh, yeah, so they are doing quite nicely. Everything looks really good in here. We planted the Endless Illumination Broalia. They're starting to fill in. These were some late additions here. Um, and then I did add the White Wedding Hydrangea. I've had to keep her nice and well watered, obviously, because, you know, new transplant, new hydrangea, and she's nice and perky right now and doing really nice. Uh, hopefully we will get some beautiful blooms off of her this year. There's no reason why we should not, but she is doing quite nicely as well. While we're right here, let's go ahead and hit the front porch. Now, it is hard for me to show you these baskets because I'm short and they're tall, <laughs> but they are doing great. Uh, this is the, these are 24 inches wide. I got these from Kinsman Garden Company. You saw where we planted these up and doing nicely. Now they could be, in my opinion, they could be a little fuller. That is because we have not had them on irrigation yet. We just got the drip tubing and the yesterday, I do believe. So we are gonna be installing that drip tubing. So once they get more consistent water, then they're just going to take off. But still very happy with them. They're hanging in there, haha, <laughs> no pun intended. They're hanging in there and doing quite well, as are these red geraniums. These are kind of a test trial for us to see how we like these red geraniums. Uh, oh, Brenna found her one of those little sticky gumballs. Have you ever, uh, they're off of the trees. I think they're off the, oh, 
what is that tree? You know, they're like the little sticky balls, and um, they have like not thorns, but they're they're pokey, right? She loves those things, and she'll get it and she'll toss it up in the air. Anyway, she found one. So, all right, now now let's do is I want to give you an update on um, the chicken coop because <laughs> bless y'all's hearts. <clears throat> excuse me. I know you think we've probably like completely forgotten about our chickens and that they just like fell off the face of the earth and so did the chicken coop. I promise we're making progress. It is life happens y'all. So let me give you an update on the site for the chicken coop. All right, so here we are <laughs> at the site of the future home of the chicken coop from Carolina Coops. Again, you saw us begin this clearing process of clearing the spot for the chicken coop. Jerry has done some magnificent work. We had um, got the trees removed, got them all cleaned up, all the debris. My gosh, if you've ever cut down a tree, you know how much of the debris from the top of the canopy. Whew, it was a hot mess, but we've gotten all that cleared out and we've pretty much gotten the site for the coop designed. So basically, and y'all don't judge me because this exposes a whole new level of hot messness. You'll see exactly what I mean here in a second. Um, uh, the hot messness is happening over there in that back corner. Just ignore that. All right. So the chicken coop basically is going to start um, right here and it's six feet wide and 24 feet long. The coop itself is not that large right it, the the girls don't need that much room because basically all they're going to be going doing in the coop is going in there and sleeping and nesting and laying their eggs it is the run that definitely um can sit like makes up the whole the bulk of this chicken coop i can't get the words out so the run is 24 feet long the whole thing is 24 feet long but they can actually go underneath the coop um, so the coop itself where they hang out where the nesting things are is relatively small i don't remember the exact dimensions it's six feet by i don't remember and then the coop the run rather goes out 24 feet because you want your chickens outside right and the whole thing will be covered so it has a roof they're going to get nice, beautiful sun right now. Um, so that will go this way. And then in the afternoon, the because the sun does set here um, behind these trees, the coop part itself will be right in here. So it gets some beautiful shade. So in the heat of the summer, that will be fantastic. So this gives you an idea of where the coop is going to be because we were just in the shade garden right there. Um, obviously that is that is the house. This is the garage side. That is the driveway of the house. Gives you an idea. So in future plans, we will go ahead and develop all this area into gardens. I'm really excited because when you're up here in the afternoon, this area in the woods, obviously is gonna be nice and shaded. It is even shaded right now, but this is going to make a perfect area for like a woodland garden, nice shade garden. And I was talking to my mama, um, there is a ditch, just a natural gully, just right over here. So that gives me a definite end, like it'll end and I can fill this in with all sorts of really fun shade loving plants. Obviously we'll come in here and just get the little debris out. Don't have any plans for getting like major trees out, maybe just the little tiny like little short scraggly things. We'll get all that cleaned up. And then another fun thing is because, right, accessibility. You've got to be able to access these points when you've got livestock, when we've got gardens up here. All of this will need to be um, accessible with machinery and Johnny and us and everything like that. So just to give you an idea, uh, so there is a little path that we have created right beside the tractor shed. So the tractor shed, and then these are green giants. There's a nice little access point right here that all of our machinery can get up. And then Jerry created a little road that comes this way where the mulch is not. And then as we spin around, it goes all the way um, behind these trees right here. And so from this tree, it goes all the way in the back and right here in the front. So I'm going to eventually turn this whole area from tree to tree into another garden. I don't have 
again a whole lot of plans this year for that garden it is more about um, getting it cleaned up so we've got some roots showing we've got some limbs right there we need just to limb up the trees that are there all the trees that are there are going to stay there and then that will become a garden unto itself so the next step is um, basically assemble the chicken coop. It came as a kit and so we just put it together. You don't have a foundation so I don't have to worry about like footers and um, laying brick and all that. It will sit directly on the ground. We will assemble it, get it painted. We decided to paint it after we assemble it because there's so many pieces it'll be easier to put it together and then paint it um, and then we'll have irrigation water up here at this point we're not going to have electricity uh, we had some really fun um, solar options that we are exploring so we will use more like solar lights instead of electrical lights up here but the irrigation the water lines of course are a major thing because chickens have to have fresh water so that will be happening really really soon because I told Jerry's like we have got to get these sweet girls out so speaking of the sweet girls let me go show you how they are growing because oh my gosh they're not little girls anymore they're becoming young ladies we are in the uh what was originally our chicken coop went to a garden shed and then we have turned it back into a chicken coop temporarily for these sweet girls so they are growing they are very happy they're very curious i currently have someone pecking on my hip over here and uh, doing really nicely. So this sweet thing right here, her name is Midnight uh, because she is a one of the green queens and because we can tell because she has really a fluffy face. So, uh, so that is Midnight. Way back there in the back, that is Queenie. She is another green queen. She is a beautiful kind of a silver and black. And then Eleanor is currently pecking on my knee and she too has a fluffy face. She was the one that looked more like a little chipmunk. Uh, but yeah, so they are doing great. Very curious, very happy. Uh, the Rhode Island Reds and the Black Australorps. It is really hard to tell them apart because they are all the exact same color and have, <laughs> they don't have any different markings. We have one of the Buff Orpingtons. Remember, we lost one of them. Um, we have one that is super friendly, and so I call her Sunshine just because every time she jumps up on me, I say, well, hey, Sunshine. And uh, so she has been dubbed Sunshine. So honestly, it's hard to tell which one she is. It's just the one that's a little bit more friendly, uh, but they are very curious very happy but i know that they are ready to get out of this and into some full sun sun sunshine and ready to go so this little tub over here of course if you remember that was their original nesting boxes when they were not nesting boxes brooder when they were little and um so i've turned it into their dust bath so we have some great soil in there that they can fluff around in and get clean and then of course their uh roost that they love to hang out in and then their water and their food so that is the update on the girls so let's get back to the gardens all right back to the gardens so give you an update on the gardens and how they are doing we're going to go check out the uh, patio and the gardens leading up to that just want to give you a quick little show you this this is the selenia these are selenia begonias. I had to stop and take a breath for a minute. Selenia begonias, they um, are not a new plant, but they will become um, added to the Proven Winners line next year. This is selenia apricot. And y'all, these are two plants in here, and I absolutely love these plants. They are extremely low maintenance. I have just watered them. Do not fertilize them. Um, they just have water and very happy. So this gets lots of good sun now and then it is in the shade in the afternoon. Doing really, really well. These are in some of the unique stone urns here beside the garage. We went ahead and planted some also in the landscape to see how they perform in the landscape and right now they are just rocking and rolling and doing really well but just to give you an update on of course the Gatsby nope this is the forest pansy bed sorry this is the bed that is a sun and shade all in one it gets lots of beautiful sun in the morning and then it this side is completely shaded in the afternoon so that's why I can have hostas and the still bees right here this is the munchkin uh, oak leaf hydrangea. Is she not just beautiful? So pretty. 
You saw me empty out the unique, the hummingbird. This is the rectangular hummingbird planter. And I took out my perennials and added them to the landscape. So look at these beautiful eucharis, doing fantastic. So we've got some there. We've got more in the back. I kind of planted all those perennials all in various places. And then you saw me plant this with the annuals. So beautiful annual color and just doing great could not be happier with this again i've not water soluble fertilized this it has just stayed um, nice and well watered and doing really really nice we have a video on that um, you can go check that out and then the what do we call the gat no yes <laughs> y'all my brain whoo wee uh the gatsby gal bed doing really nice the scent landias are on their way out as far as blooming so if you're going to prune them this would be the time to do that as soon as it finishes blooming you want to go ahead and prune them um, because they do bloom on old growth so those are doing really well and then of course because this is called the gatsby gal bed look at that there's old gatsby gal gatsby gal oak leaf hydrangea it is a sun tolerant hydrangea most oak leaves are going to be more shade this is sun it gets sun up to sun down doing really nice and it'll be a five to six foot tall and wide they are doing great as is uh, the generous gardener still getting a couple of blooms on her i did come in here uh, just the other day and get it cleaned up as far as went ahead and deadheaded and tied everybody back up that was getting a little loosey-goosey on me so you can see right here i've got a rogue limb that could be kind of tucked back in and secured but they are doing really nicely and then my banana cream two shasta daisies have started to bloom um, doing really nicely so you can see this is was the first bloom and it's a beautiful nice soft kind of creamy white and then as we come over here you'll see these that are new blooms and they're a nice soft pale yellow that is why it's called banana cream because you'll get different shades of yellow and white on the plants um, at the same time brenna is wearing her her scarf for uh, in honor of Memorial Day. So she's got, she's being very patriotic today. And then moving on right behind Brenna, we have, of course, where we just were in the chicken coop. And you saw me put this collection of pots together the other day. Everybody's doing great, doing some water, very happy. Um, not much to report on this because this is a fairly new planting, but uh, you can see that the purple fountain grass is turning definitely has darker shades to it um, look at those sweet these are the new super bells for next year a nice beautiful double pink doing quite nicely and then y'all loved this um, petunia as much as i did this is an, a petunia that a customer gave me that i could try out they believe it's called lime royale so that is a fun new one and then i got these cute little frogs are they not precious got them ordered them from i believe it was called wind wind and weather um i'll put a, a link on there but it was a great little magazine that came in the mail and they came as a set of three and so they're meant to go on the pots so you have a frog that hangs upside down one that's climbing in and then one that's hanging on so super stinking cute i actually ordered two sets of those so one for me and then one for my mama because i know that she appreciates it as much as i do we love some really fun whimsical garden art right i mean you got to have fun in your garden people all right speaking of fun look at these beautiful beautiful plants oh my goodness so here we have this is the supertunia mini vista indigo doing great spreading out really nicely um, there are a couple of holes so if i want full coverage i suppose i could come back in and tuck those in um we'll see i don't know we had a massive storm come through our area 10 days ago with like 85 mile an hour winds and a lot it was straight line winds and they came in and actually they pushed down my roses they broke them uh, in some of those areas so the worst were the Ruol doll and then the poet's wife so they are um, they're going to require a little bit of attention but we had a photo shoot here this week and i did not want to cut them because of course all those gorgeous blooms and i knew that the photographer could work around 
the uh, disheveled look of the actual plant and still get those gorgeous flowers. So once they finish blooming, I'll have to give them a nice hard prune because I do have some limbs in there that got snapped. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of repair work. That's gardening, right? There was nothing wrong with the plants. The plants didn't do anything, but when you have 85 mile an hour straight line winds, odds are things are going to get hurt in your garden and this was the brunt of it if that's the brunt of it i'll be happy because we had one town over lost huge tons of massive massive trees and there was a lot of damage so i'm not complaining we're just giving a little update on that the plants around the fountain oh my goodness y'all could not be happier look how beautiful everything is so we have the snow princess sweet alyssum then we have the super Junior mini vista yellow which is new this year and then the artist blue adjuratum back there in the back of course the fountain is just as happy as ever this is from unique stone love this one it's called the hospitality fountain we only lost one snow princess and i'm not really sure why but it was i don't know if somebody peed on it stepped on it but you can see a little bit of a hole right there it's all right everything will bounce back not a problem and then uh, panning over a little bit you'll see the super Tunia mini vista whites along with the sunstar rose pentas now you may notice that my gardenias are looking rough especially these two right here that is due to the arctic blast um, that crazy cold cold air that we got right before christmas these two definitely look the worst but they are flushing out with new growth i did holly tone on them and then they are on irrigation so they're flushing out i told jerry it's sad though i really doubt i'm going to get any kind of blooms off of them this year so i'll probably go ahead and fertilize them again make sure that i don't have any buds forming and then i'll give them a little trim but there is new growth popping out so that is very encouraging gardenias are my absolute favorite so you can see that new growth right there that is coming. Like I said, I just don't think I'm gonna get any flowers this year, but again, such is life, right? Such is life. We're just gonna, we're gonna pivot and move on. Speaking of moving on, wanna give you an update on this end of the forest pansy bed because this is the side of the bed that gets full hot afternoon sun. So you saw me plant up. This is, believe it or not, there is a unique stone trough under here. Um, this is the mass planting of the Super Bells from Proven Winners that will be coming out next year. I'll pop up the name because I honestly don't remember what they're called. <laughs> but they are doing, I mean, y'all, glorious. Like, just look at that setting, how it is. So we have a Sugar Shack button bush right here. That is an edge worthy behind it. This is a perennial salvia. This is Diane. And um, yeah, everything is just looking really, really nice. Super excited because this is my first year I am going to get buds, flowers off of my sugar shack. See that little ball right there? That is going to be the bloom. So they are covered. Really excited about that. Give you an update on those as they come along. Um, the Namesia. We'll see how it holds out. It's starting to look a little rough. Uh, we'll see how it can handle our heat and humidity. Typically is a cool weather plant. This is uh, coconut Nemesia, the improved version from Proven Winners. We'll see. It looks a little bit, especially here on the ends, like it could be struggling. The yin and yangs that we pruned, doing really nice. Everybody is just doing great. What is doing equally amazingly as well are the incredible hydrangeas that we replanted so if you remember we lost our incredible hedge these are coming along quite nicely covered in blooms um, buds the blooms will be coming very very shortly and then y'all look at this double play doozy spireas i mean hello and there are bumblebees all all in this plant i don't know if i can get in there but spireas are wonderful because they are continuous bloomers. Doozy is a sterile variety, so it does not set seed. So because it doesn't set seed, it's continuously producing more flowers because the plant thinks it's trying to produce seed. And so they just continuously will um, put out new flowers and new growth. It does bloom on new growth, so you can prune it 
full disclosure, I forgot to prune these. Not forgot, I didn't have time. I didn't prune them, and so this set I did not prune. So once the vast majority of these blooms are all done, I probably am gonna come in here and give it a little bit of a shape up to encourage even a nice tighter growth on it um, and some, some beautiful blooms. But man, those bumblebees, Oh man, they are loving life. Now, I also have doozies right over here that I did prune and they are looking quite nicely. Uh, they're doing really good, real pretty, three of those in there. And then of course you saw us plant all of the annuals. So that is the Surefire Cherry Cordial doing really nice. Just to kind of give you a little bit of a pan. We'll come back, I'll show you the roses here in a minute. But while we're here, um, I wanna head over and let me show you and give you an update real quickly on the dahlias, because you saw me working in the dahlia patch. Hold on. All right, dahlia patch right here behind me. And, oh man, okay, doing good. And I'm seeing some color. So let's talk about some color here, folks. Oh, yes, 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 yes. This time last year, these dahlias were not even in the ground yet. And we are already talking about cracking some color. Uh, so stinking excited. Dahlias are, um, they're a beautiful, wonderful uh, addiction for a gardener. And I'm gonna try to do this because I can't see this. Look at that, there we go, uh-huh. So last year, uh, Laura from Garden Answer sent me a whole huge box of her dahlia tubers got them planted i think it was like around june the 4th and <laughs> here we are may the 20 something and i've already got flower buds and color cracking look at that so this is one of laura's that she sent me this whole section right here is the same dahlia it is i do have name tags down here on the bottom but it's really hard for me to see um, because the plants are just so massive. But here we go, just doing really nicely. I've got them all staked up. Nobody has flopped over. So that is a great, wonderful improvement. And then putting down the snail and slug bait every couple of weeks has really helped. So my foliage is beautiful. Somebody, I was talking about the maintenance on dahlias as far as like good consistent deep watering multiple times a week. And then keeping the snails and slugs off of them keeping them staked up so they don't flop over. Um, and I was like, that's the maintenance you need to do on it. I wasn't even thinking because mine aren't blooming yet. Uh, somebody said, well, you need a deadhead. Absolutely. So dahlias do absolute the best when you can deadhead them. So you can deadhead basically, I guess, two main ways. One, you can cut the flowers and make bouquets out of them. That is deadheading, even though it's doesn't really what we think about deadheading because the flowers are pretty but you're still pruning the plant right so you're taking off those beautiful blooms and using them for great purposes which is what i'm doing like we're not selling the dahlias we're using them for uh, cut flowers uh, i'm gonna have bundles and bundles of bouquets that i can use and then give away to friends so do that but if you can't get all of the flowers which you're probably you're not going to be able to unless you're out here cutting every single day is you once the flowers are spent just trim them off just snip them off that way the plant um, is continuously putting in new energy and building up and giving you more beautiful flowers but yeah everybody is doing great just growing their little hearts out and of course i will keep you updated as everybody grows and develops um, this one is terracotta and clearly terracotta is a nice tall one no color yet on that uh, but super excited all right let's continue on because we've got more to show you give you an update on the oregano who knew oregano could be so gorgeous this is drops of jupiter three clumps of them beautiful chartreuse color uh, they are growing quite nicely they will flower even if they did not flower oh my gosh are they not just beautiful and i know you may be thinking well gosh jenny why'd you put them on the back of the bed when they're so little well because we see this bed from all different angles so yes they are right there behind those double play doozies which are just spectacular i love it and notice as a design tip right so you have three here and then they repeat back up there at the top so tying in that whole garden together and then here is elizabeth the uh, david austin rose that i put into the container she is showing some nice beautiful new growth and so she's just kind of plugging along she's doing quite well just doing her little thing over here um, as is the high noon europsis right here that we have 
gorgeous. I mean, everybody's just doing really, really nicely. The yarrow is coming in. The echinaceas are already blooming, which is crazy for it to be. Um, here we are in May and we've got those blooming. And then of course we call this Emily's rose because this is uh, the rose standard. This is the Julia Child rose standard that my Emily wanted to rescue from the nursery because she looked awful this time of year, last year. So, but look at her now. I mean, gorgeous. The Julia Child Rose is uh, named after the famous chef, right? Because she loved to use butter. And so you've got these beautiful roses that have that nice buttery yellow. I mean, just look at them and they're huge. So yeah, we need to come in here and do a little cleanup, tidy her up, but just massive, gorgeous. And they smell amazing. Just smell so good. Nye Bevan, he is a little slower coming up. Uh, we've got some growth on him, but not, not quite as vigorous as uh, Elizabeth and some of my other David Austins. We'll see how they do. Um, and then blueberries. We've got some blueberries. I know this is not really an update, but there are some big old huge fat blueberries and they are delicious. Look at the one in a melon. One in a melon echinacea right here covered in flowers, right? Covered in buds and got some nice height to them. Really super nice, doing great. So let's continue. We're gonna move on. I think, where are we gonna go next? Where are we gonna go next? Uh, we're gonna figure out where we're gonna go next because there's so much more to show you. <gasps> oh, I know where we're gonna go. We're gonna go up to the deck boxes because oh, they look great. All right, sorry. Before we go up to the deck boxes, I wanted to show you this phenomenal lavender. Phenomenal Lavender lives up to its name. I mean, this lavender is two and a half, three feet tall with these flower buds. It's getting ready to just absolutely explode in color. There are three of those plants right here. Love this lavender. If you uh, <laughs> are a faithful viewer of Gardening with Creekside, you know that I have struggled with lavender. It is because we are in North Carolina. We are hot, we are humid. Uh, I have clay soil that retains moisture. All the things that lavender does not like. Lavender likes to be more in an arid, drier air environment. They do not like to have wet feet. They do not like to sit in wet, conditions um, not that they're sitting but that we just I mean clay holds water right i have killed more sweet romance lavender <laughs> than one should be allowed to because i was trying it in all these different locations i had done sweet romance i have done munstead i have done different varieties of lavender and in the landscape in the pots in the, all these things and they never they would survive for maybe a year and then it was just a slow death and it was sad Kata, our beloved uh, friend and sales rep from Walters Gardens said, Jenny, try one more time and try phenomenal. I did last year, could not be happier y'all. This is a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. So it is non-branded, which means it's not like a Southern Living or a Proven Winners or a Monrovia. You will be able to find this in a black pot at your local nursery. Go get it, you need it. Especially if you have struggled with lavender like I have. So. Um, as a side note, we do have it for sale here at Creekside because we are growing it. Now, coming on up, these roses also got a little bit of a hit. You can tell that it is time to go ahead and deadhead Desdemona because she has been in full bloom and she has been glorious and she is beautiful. I love this rose. I mean, look at that. Such a beautiful, beautiful flower. But it is time to go ahead and start cleaning her up. And as the same as Emily Bronte. Emily took a real hit with the weather as well. And so she is needs to be cleaned up here. All of the Mini Vista Whites are doing quite nicely, as are the Impatience. Now, again, this is gonna be kind of hard for me to show you because I'm short, this is tall, but look at the Selenia Yellow Begonia Hanging Baskets. I showed you the Selenia um, apricot. This is yellow. So let's hop up on the porch and I will try to uh, show you a little bit of a better view. Now I know my blue pot does not match and go with this, but it's for a millionaire. And every afternoon we have coffee sitting right here and uh, that's my rocking chair. And we always have a male who comes right here feeds on that vermillionaire and you know brenna she is my shadow right so nine times out of ten she is laying right there beside of the rocking chair 
and Mr. Hummer comes right here. Does not care that there is a, <laughs> what does she weigh, 90 pound German Shepherd laying right there. Um, she comes, he comes and eats and has a feast with the Vermillionaire. We'll come up this way and try to show you a little bit better of these hanging baskets. So next year, this year, if you can find selenias, it is a series. So there's selenia yellow, apricot, then there is a white and a red, just gorgeous. And we'll move on down here. There are three plants in these baskets. These baskets are 14 inches, I wanna say, uh, 14 inches in diameter, but look at that beautiful again i have water soluble fertilized them i think once and then they just receive regular water here we go you saw me do this shea container doing great everybody's just plugging along really really happy and then here we go the deck boxes they are filling in let me tell you they are filling in so we have more of those selenia yellow begonias right here mini vista whites this is pink cashmere. It's going to be a new superbina for proven winners next year. The saffron finch yellow petunia will be new next year. Um, but everybody is just filling in really nicely, getting some good action going on. Um, <laughs> poor little plum dandy right here. There is a plum dandy, so we might have to do a little bit of telling everybody to go in their appropriate directions. But yeah, so just doing great. Really happy with how this all is growing and developing. I believe I have fertilized this one one or two times. So that just kind of gives you an idea, perspective. That's why it's so important to use really high quality potting soil. Go ahead and put your slow release fertilizer in there to begin with. The compost, of course, helps. So when you're using great soil, great amendments in your soil, you're not gonna have to be out here feeding them constantly, especially in the beginning while all that nutrition is available to them. Um, just good, consistent water. That is the key for your flowering annuals really any plant right whatever their water needs are meet those needs and then they are just gonna they're growing and developing love it so much all right i have one more update that i want to give you before we sign off for today the clematis remember we planted three clematis here um, on the wall of this uh, where the roses are here at the patio well they have started to bloom and just doing fantastic. This is Scepter to Isle Rose. Again, it's time to come in here and give her a little bit of the cleanup, but look at this. Is this not gorgeous? Off the top of my head, I do not remember the name of this. It will pop up on the screen for you. Brushwood Nursery, that is where I get my clematis, but look at that. Is that not just gorgeous with the roses, just all intertwined with one another? Um, just fantastic this one and then the one the the two on the far ends are the probably the most prolific the one in the middle is a little slower who knows i mean i just planted these as um, they were basically one gallon plants and i'll have to go back and look at that was that march early March, I believe it was, late February, early March that I planted these. Not even, you know, just a couple of months old. So they will just grow and develop and just get more and more gorgeous as each year passes. So uh, I just want to give you a little update tour on how things are going. Some of the projects that we have done that you have seen, especially the chickens, because y'all have been asking about the chickens. I know y'all, trust me, I, we are going to get those chickens. They are nice and happy where they are, but there's just been a lot going on. <laughs> Spring is crazy when you own a garden center. Not only when you own a garden center, but when you grow the plants for the garden center, spring is absolutely bananas. Um, so things are starting to slow down a little bit now that it's past Mother's Day that kind of is like the peak for us is Mother's Day and then things kind of gradually will uh, taper off as the season goes on because that's when the heat hits. We're gonna get the chickens taken care of, I promise. And they are, trust me, they are very happy and well taken care of, they are not. <laughs> <laughs> They're not lacking for anything right now. Uh, yeah, if you are a animal at our house, then you are rather spoiled around here if you haven't noticed. So we're gonna get on that. That's a big project of mine that we need to get on. I hope you have found this fun, informative, and inspirational. Thank y'all so much for all your love and support. Thank you for going along this crazy journey of gardening and life and just coming beside of us and walking with us as we go through this thing called life. We so appreciate you. You just do not understand how much we appreciate your love, your support, your encouragement, your uh, good feedback. It is fantastic. 
So as always, thanks so much for joining with Creekside. Y'all have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.